How you doing there? Welcome back to Babylon Talmud. Today we're studying Daf Lamed Tes, Daf Thirty Nine of Masech the Bava Basra. Friends, uh, mm, oh, all right, uh, yeah, I think we're still talking about some uh, Moches stuff, like when Shimon's like, "Yo, Ruven, what are you doing here?" Uh, no, well, yeah, kind of. All right, so we're gonna start on Daf Lamed Ches Amud Beis, like three lines from the bottom. Here we go. At the two dots. Hey, Chidami, Machoya. All right. No. So how does this Machoya work? You know, uh, Ruvain is uh, on the property for three years. All right. At some point within that time, Shim is like, yo, what's going on over here? Why is Ruvain on my property? So he wants to be Moche. He wants to to uh, make it clear that this is not Ruvain's property. It's his property. It's Shimon's property. And that... Uh, Ruven better hold on to his document if he has one, because um, because um, the chazaka is not going to. You can't. We won't be able to rely on the chazaka. Is Ruven's going to have to prove if he really bought it? He's going to have to prove with the document. So what 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 exactly does Shimon have to say? So Rav Zvid says Rav Zvid planyo gazlo neu loyabi machoyo. So if Shimon simply says Ruven is a gazlan. Ruvain's a no good goslin. That uh, okay. <laughs> so he's saying Ruvain's a goslin. Again, what 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 what's the point of the chazaka? A chazaka is instead of a document, right? Eventually, the Ruvain, you know, eventually, Ru, you know, assuming that Ruvain legitimately bought the property from Shimon, eventually things can happen. He might lose the documents. We say it's understandable, as we know, right? It, 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 it's reasonable. To expect Ruben to hold on to his document for three years. And within three years, he would have to prove that he owns the, the, the property by showing his document. But after three years, we understand that maybe the, the document can get lost. But as long as he was there for three years and nobody gave him a hard time. So when he says that I bought it from Shimon and I've been here for three years and nobody gave me a hard time, we could say, okay, fine, it's yours and we won't ask for a document. However, if Shimon is mocha at any point during those three years, and Shimon's giving him a hard time and saying, Ruvain, that's not your property, it's my property. Well then, then all of a sudden we can't, it's not smooth sailing. We can't just rely on the fact, on the fact that Ruvain's been there for three years because Shimon's contesting Ruvain's right. And therefore, that is, sends a message to Ruvain. Ruvain, things are not going smoothly. Hold on to your document for dear life. Right? Make sure you don't lose that document because if you lose that document, then you're not going to be able to claim that the property is yours. The chazaka only works when things go smoothly. We could say, okay, look, he had no reason, you know, there was no specific reason that he had to take extra care to hold on to the document. So he, the document got lost in the meantime. We can assume that it's his property. But if Shimon is moche and he says, you know, Reuven, this isn't your property, it's my property, then Reuven better make sure he doesn't lose that document because he's going to need that document now. To prove that it's really his, we won't just be able to let, uh, rely on the chazaka. So, wh- so the so the point is that whatever Shimon is doing to be moche, it's gonna of course have to give across the message to Ruvain, hold on to your document. So now going back to what Reb Zvid says, simply claiming that Ruvain's a ganif, that that doesn't. Uh, so let's go back to for a second. Lo yav machoy, but plan ye gazlono who dika ochil aroy. Now that is a macho. Again. Again. Where am I? Planya gazlono. But if he says, Ruven is a gazlon. That's what the uh, Gosa Bach says. Because he's eating my land. Ooh, all of a sudden we're starting to say Shimon's referring to land not as Ruvain's land, but as his, as Shimon's land. Ooh, okay. So all of a sudden there's, all of a sudden there's, there, there's, there, there, there's, 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 uh, 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 Shimon's contesting Ruvain's ownership of what he's considering to be his own, Shimon's own property. Because Lanusa and Ruvain is stealing my land. And guess what I'm doing tomorrow? I'm taking him to Bezdin and I'm going to take that land away from him and show who the real owner is. It's me, not him. Well, that is a macho. That makes the point very clear to Ruvain that, oh, Shimon's coming after this land. I better make sure I hold on to my document. So that's the point. So the macho that Shimon does, you know, has to make it clear to Ruvain, Ruvain, 
hold on to that document, don't lose it, because if you do, you'll be in trouble. So if Shimon simply says, Reuven's a goslin, okay, it's very broad, it's very general. If Shimon says, Reuven is a goslin because he's stealing my land, that land that he's on is not his, it's mine, okay. And then there's a uh, Tamagra taken to Bezin, uh, uh, Rashbam quotes Rabbi Nechanano, but also then he quotes uh, uh, Rav Yaakov ben Bar Yoker. Was that the was that the Rebbe of Rashi? Not sure, maybe. But uh, who says that you don't necessarily that the important part isn't necessarily that I'm taking you to Bezin tomorrow. The important part is specifically that Shimon makes it clear that he considers Ruvain to be on his Shimon's land. So that so by so by making a machoya that Shimon says, who's this guy, Ruvain, who's stealing my land that he's occupying? Well, then it makes it clear to Ruvain, Ruvain, you better hold on to your documentation that, that, that shows that it's in fact yours if you in fact bought it. Okay. Fine. So, Avi Machoy, now that is a Machoy. Omar Lotemu Lei Mai. What if. Shimon is mocha in front. We're going to see Taka Machloikes about uh, is machoya in front of two or in front of three, but we're going to assume it's in, the Allah is it's in front of two, so we can assume it's in front of two. So, so Omar leitemu le mai. What if Shimon says so he's being mocha and he says whatever he needs to say to these witnesses, but then he says to the witnesses lo temu le, don't tell Reuven. My, so what's the halacha? If Shimon is mocha, but he tells the Edom, don't tell Reuven that I was mocha, that I said that. So Amr of Zvid says, Zvid, I'll call Amr, let le. So Zvid says, well, if Shimon tells the witnesses, don't tell Reuven, well then how is Reuven supposed to know? Of course it's not a good macho. If Reuven, if he tells them not to tell Reuven, then how is Reuven supposed to find out? Rapapa Amr, ledide lo temu le, lachrine imulu. Rapapa says, one second. Shimon is saying to the witnesses, don't tell Reuven, but you can tell other people. Chavre, chavre, isle. Chavre, de chavre, chavre, isle. And as we've seen this concept before, word will get back to Reuven. Word will get back to Reuven. So Kilu, if Shimon says to the witnesses, don't tell Reuven, but you can tell other people, and then those people will tell other people, word will get back to Reuven. So says our Papa, it would still be acceptable. Amule. And what if Shimon is mocha in front of witnesses? And then they say to him, so this is a new case, and then they say to Shimon, Loi Aminon Lei, we're not going to tell Reuven. Amr Zvid Akamu Lei, Lo Aminon Lei. So Zvid says, well, if they said they're not going to tell Reuven, well then how's Reuven supposed to find out? It's not a good machoya. Rapapa Amr, whereas Rapapa says, Ladide Lo Aminon Lei, no, what they're saying is we're not going to tell Reuven directly, but Lachwine Amrelu, we're going to tell other people, and therefore, we can rely on Chavra Chavra Islay, the Chavra 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 Islay, that eventually Ruvain will find out and will know to hold on to his document. Omer Luru Lo Tepuk Lechu Shusa. If Shimon says to Ruvain, if Shimon says, wait, what? What did he say? If Shimon says to the witnesses, Lo Tepuk Lechu Shusa, I don't want a peep coming out of your mouth. This is confidential between you two and me. And he's, he's moche, and he tells the witnesses, I don't want you to tell a soul. Well, Amr Zvid says, Zvid, Zvid says, well, I mean, Shimon was moche in front of witnesses who he told not to tell a soul. So, I mean, how's Ruvain? There, there, there's no chaver chaver chis there. You know, there's no... Uh, there's no, the, in that case, nobody's going to find out. I mean, there's no way to, uh, to, for, for Reuven to find out, so that would not be a good macho. And I believe the Rashbam says that the Rapapa would agree with that as well. Amrulay, this is a separate case, if Shimon is mocha in front of these witnesses, and then they say to him, Lo mafkin and shusa, hey, we're not going to tell anybody about this. Amr Papa, al ka'amrulay, lo mafkin and shusa. So says our Papa, look, they said they're not going to tell a soul. So how is Reuven supposed to find out? Ravuna bread of Yeshua Amar says Ravuna bread of Yeshua Kol milsa de lo ramyo ole de inish Amar lav lav adayte Says Ravuna bread of Yeshua Look at the end of the day If anything that doesn't specifically concern a person directly They may end up uh, spilling the beans and saying it So meaning 
So if Unabay the Bishua says that, you know, these witnesses say to, to Shimon, we're not going to tell any, a soul, then the day it doesn't affect them. What, 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 what does Rashi say? It doesn't affect him anyways, whether they say it, whether if they spill the beans, don't spill the beans, they don't have anything on the line. So, so they'll end up mentioning to somebody and then the word will get back to, to, to Reuben. So according to Vunabed of Yeshua, even if they say we're not going to tell our soul, um, it could still be considered a machah because so long as they have no skin in the game, it doesn't affect them either way. Uh, we can assume they'll end up telling people and the word will get back to Reuben. All right. Kivaldi. It's not so late. What time is it? Nah, it's, oh, oh, 6.30 already. All right. Not as, okay. It's a little bit later, but I'm like a little bit tired, but I should be able to manage it's not that difficult of a daf. It's an interesting daf too. I think. Do you find this interesting? Of course you do. On my Ravi, on my Rav Nachman, it says Rav the name of Nachman, Machoyo Shelo Befanov Havyo Macho. Okay, so Rav says the name, as he quotes Rav Nachman, that Macho Shelo Befanov, that if Shimon is Mocha against Ruven, but not in Ruven's presence, rather in front of witnesses, Havyo Machoyo. So it is a good machoya. Okay. Eisve Rabbi Lerav Nachman. But Rabbi asked Rav Nachman, what about Rabbi Yehuda's opinion in the Mishnah? On Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda says Rabbi Yehuda, Le'omu shalishanim elo, as we learned, it was yesterday, right? That when Rabbi Yehuda says three years, or that Rabbi Yehuda explains that this concept of three years is not, uh, you know, general. It's not a general concept. It's, there could be instances where a chazoka takes three years. For example, el For example, if Shimon's in Spain, the Yachzik Shono and Ruvain back in Eretz Yisrael is going to move, you know, go go onto Shimon's land and start working it to make a chazoka. He's on it for a year. The Yelchov Yodu Shana. Then the people are like, wait, we better tell Shimon. So they go and they travel to Spain and it takes a year. And then Shimon's like, oh wow, I better get back to Yisrael to, 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 to get Reuben off of my property. And that takes another year to get back. A total of three years. Now, Rav Nachman, what I don't understand is, Rav says to Rav Nachman, what I don't understand is, is that if Shimon can just be Moche Shalom Bifonov, that Shimon can be Moche, he doesn't have to go back and be Moche to Reuben. Doesn't have to be Moch in Reuven's presence. So Lomali <clears throat> Lemesi. Why does Shimon have to schlep back to Eretz Yisrael? Leisiv also Maduchte Vilimche. Let him stay in Spain and be Moch in front of witnesses and let them. And let, let, let Reuven find out through them. Why does he have to go back in order to be Moch? It sounds like Mechoshele Befanov, Loyav Yamachod, that you have to do it in Reuven's presence. Hosme to Teva Kamaj Malon. So Rav Nachman answers, that is just, you know, giving advice. It's, it's, a, it, it's preferable for Shimon to schlep back to Eretz Yisrael to be Moche in front of Reuven directly. So that Shimon will get back and he'll just make sure that this issue is sorted out, right? Meaning, Chava, that Shimon is far away in Spain and he's got a whole issue with real estate back in Eretz Yisrael. Reuven is taking his property and it's a big headache. So we're saying, look, ideally, Shimon should go back to Eretz Yisrael and collect the, um, right, the Nesiv and Ishkel Ayro Fair, they should collect the property and any fruits before Ruvain kind of takes them and it'll be difficult to take away from him. Now, So from the fact that Rove is challenging Rav Nachman from Rabbi Yehuda, it implies that uh, that Rav disagrees with Rav Nachman. Rav Nachman said, But from the fact that Rav that, that Rav is challenging Rav Nachman, it implies that Rav does not hold. Right? That Rav disagrees. The Rav says, "Machoyah shleib b'fanav loy havi machoyah." The Amar Rav machoyah shleib b'fanav havi machoyah. But Rav says, we know that Rav's opinion though is that machoyah shleib b'fanav havi machoyah. We know that he agrees with Rav Nachman. Mechoy shalom b'fan of Ahavim Achoyo. Pasu the Shamir of Nachman Tzavah. Well, once he heard, once he heard Rav Nachman, his Rebbe say, one of his Rebbeim say, that Mechoy shalom b'fan of Ahavim Achoyo. So then, at that point, he so he agreed with Rav Nachman that Mechoy shalom b'fan of Ahavim Achoyo.
Um, let me, should I pause over here? Or, uh, I guess it may as well, because I don't think I'll do... Uh, yeah, okay, one second. Ashkochinu, Rabbi Yehseb Rabbi Chanino, the Talmud of Rabbi Yehchanon. So Rabbi Yehseb Rabbi Chanino found Rabbi Yehchanon's students, and he says to them, Mi Omar, Nechur Rabbi Yehchanon, Machoye Bechamo. Did Rabbi Yehchanon express to you how many people Shimon needs to be mocha in front of? Does he have to be mocha in front of two? Does he have to be mocha in front of three? A thousand? A million? So Rabbi Abba quotes Rabbi Yochanan that Shimon has to be mocha in front of two. Rabbi Abba Amr Rabbi Yochanan says Rabbi Abba in the name of Rabbi Yochanan Machoy B'fnei Shlosha that a Machoy has to be in front of three. Let's say that Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Abba or the difference would be with regard to Rabbi Abba Rufuna. The Rabbi Abba Rufuna called Milsa de Misamra Be'ape Tlosa Lezva Mishum Lishna Bisha Loshin Hor. He enters the Bangla College Kal- shop this afternoon. Loshin Hore. Before the Shemir Salashin Shir, after the Shemir Salashin Shir, there's no Loshin Hore. Maybe, maybe that's also why they sit in a big group. Because that way, maybe if it's in a big group, then it's public information. It's not Loshin Hore, maybe. I'll call upon him. It says Rabbi Arvuno that, that um, if Shimon goes to Ruven and says, Ruven, do you know what Levi said about you? So that sounds like Lashonara, right? Gossip. Shimon's going to Ruven and saying, you know what Levi said about you. But if what Levi said was in front of three people, well then it's public knowledge, the word's going to get out, Shimon's not actually doing anything wrong. So, 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 so something that's public knowledge, something that was said in front of at least three people, would not be Lashonar to express. So if Shimon goes to Reuven and says, Reuven, you know what Levi said about you? But um, it's already, three people already knew about it. So then the assumption is Reuven would have found out about it anyways. It's public knowledge. Uh, uh, there's, there's no issue of Lashonar. So we see that, that uh, Rabbi of Huna's opinion is that if, if you say something in front of three people, then it's already considered the word is out. So let's say that the Machloik is between Rabbi Abba and Rabbi Abba is machoy in front of two or in front of three. Let's say the, the, the machloikas is about Rabbi Barfuna. Rabbi Barfuna says you need three people for the word to get out, but uh, Rabbi Abba would, disagree, would not hold like that and say that two is enough for word to get out. So therefore the point of machoy is that you need the word to get out. Uh, if you say three, it's because you need three for the word to get out. And if you say uh, two, it's because two is enough for the word to start spreading. Rabbi Abba says two, lace lay, the Rabbi Barvuna. He disagrees with the Rabbi Barvuna. Rabbi Barvuna says you need three for the word to get out. Uh, uh, um, and, uh, and, um, Rabbi Barabu would disagree with that and, and, uh, and say that all you need is two. And, um, Rabbi Abba would say that Rabbi Barvuna says that Macho is in front of three. He holds like Rabbi Barvuna that if you need three people so that the word gets out. Loi nisht. The chuli amo is the drab barifuno. Everybody agrees with drab barifuno that when you have three people, then the word gets out. The achav or kamifle the machlokas here though is man do amen b'fnei shneim kasov machoy shle b'fun of the av machoy or man do amen b'fnei gimel kasov machoy shle b'fun of av machoy ho ho. The machlokas between Reb Chibar Abba and Reb Abo is about machoy shle b'fun of. Does that work or not? So. Uh, Rabbi Bahu says in front of three people it's because he says machoya shle in front of havya machoya you could be moche remotely but for it to work it would have to be in front of three people so that the word can get back to Reuven Rabbi Bar Abba however would say nish the machoya has to be Shimon has to be moche in front of Reuven and therefore you don't need three people for the word to get out he's saying it directly to Reuven you just need two witnesses to, 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 to have evidence that this machoya took place or everybody agrees that you can be moche remotely. says in front of two, it's because you need witnesses. Right? The important thing is that the machoyas be in front of witnesses. 
And the witnesses can at least potentially go back and tell Reuven. Whereas Rabbi Baba says it has to be in front of three, he holds that, um, that there has to be the ability that Mimele, the word is going to get back to Reuven, i.e. in front of three, then the word gets out. In front of two, the word doesn't necessarily get out. Yes, they can go and they can tell Reuven, but, um, but, but um, it's, not, you know, it's not necessarily inherent that the word is going to get out. Says Rabbi Baba, we need the word to be able to get out uh, naturally, and that requires a machoyo. In front of three. Gidu bar man yoimi havale michuyoso limachuye. Gidu bar man yoimi, somebody was squatting on his land and he wanted to make, uh, he wanted to be moche, he wanted to make it clear that this squatter is not the owner of the land. Gidu bar man yoimi is the owner of the land. Ashkochinu liravhuno vilachie barav vilarav chilkio batuvi. So he found three people and he figured it'll be moche in front of them. Taviyasbe, they were sitting, umocho kamayu. And he was mocha in front of them, in front of the three of them. Lishane, the next year, Hadar also lekam lemachuye. So he came back a year later, and he says, "Okay, I want to be mocha once again to renew my mocha, my macha." So Shana Hadar also lemachuye. Amulei, they said to him, "Lo tzrichas, you don't need to be mocha nochamol. You were already mocha last year." Hachiyam Rav. Rab says, Once uh, uh, you are moche, the first year, shuv, eno, tzarech limchos, you do not need to be moche, nochamol, the next year. And Vikadamit, those say, Omele chie barab, that it was chie barab who says directly, there's a ghost who's in him, adds tanina that we learn in the Mishnah. Kevin Shemicho shana rishena, that once he is moche, uh, uh, the first year, Shuvay and Tzarek Limchos, he doesn't need to be Moiche, Noch Amol. Omar, Shlokish, which is by Kapara, but says with Shlokish, David by Kapara, but Tzarek Limchos, but Sof called Gimel, the Gimel. But you do, however, need to be Moiche every three years. So meaning, if you're Moiche, okay, so Ruven says, okay, I better hold on to the document. But if then after that, you know, there's no Macha for three years, and nobody says anything to Ruven for three years, well, then he might lose the document again. So therefore, uh, every three years, within every three years, Shimon is going to have to be moche in order to uh, keep Reuven on his toes and to, you know, so long as they haven't resolved the issue, to make Reuven have to keep on holding on to this document. Toi bo Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan doesn't understand that. V'chi gazlan yeshlo chazoko? I don't understand. Shimon's accusing Reuven as being a gazlan. So why are we assuming that he would have to be mocha every three years? Otherwise, Reuven would make a chazaka. How could a gazlan make a chazaka? Gazlan sagadatik. What do you mean he's a gazlan? He's not a gazlan. He was never proven to be a gazlan. Shimon's claiming he's a gazlan. Say like ki gazlan yeshlo chazaka. Rather, somebody about whom there's a claim that right, that he might be a gazlan. We're just going to say that it's okay. Give him another three years and then he can keep it. What do you mean? We have, we have sort of, there's a person who, 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 who we already... Uh, it was, it was a person of suspect, of suspicion. How could he make a, a, a chazaka? Um, Rava says, Rava, nonetheless, the right? Because even, it says, Toi Reb Yochanan, two lines earlier, right? It doesn't say that Reb Yochanan disagrees. He just, right, he didn't want to necessarily argue with Bar Kaparu, who was a Tana. But, uh, uh, but he says, I don't, I don't really understand why we would allow Reuben to make a chazaka once Shimon is mocha one time. But nonetheless, says Rav, the halacha is that you would have to be mocha every three years. And if he isn't mocha every three years, then eventually, you know, Reuven can make a chazaka after three years of no macho. Tony bar kapore, bar kapore taught, ir er, chazur ve ir er, chazur ve ir er. If Shimon is mocha several times, so, so long as Shimon's taine uh, 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 and macho is consistent, so then Ruvain won't be able to make a macho, right? So if every three years, let's say, Shimon is moche, and he says, Ruvain is a gazlon, it's not his land, it's my land, so then, okay, Ruvain is going to be unable to make a chazako. But, but if Shimon can't get his story straight, if one year Shimon is saying, Ruvain's a gazlon, it's not his, it's mine. And then the next time he's moche, he says that it's not Ruvain's property, uh, uh, rather, uh, he lent me money, and it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, mashkanta 
But at the end, it's going to go back to me. It's not really his. It's like, wait, last time you said he's a Gaza. Now he's saying it's Mashkanta. You got to get your story straight. You know, if, if Shimon can't get his story straight, so then, so then it's not going to be a proper Macha and Ruvain will be able to make a Chazaka. Chavit, that was Daf Lamentes of Mesechte Bove Basra. We talk and learned about a lot of uh, very interesting stuff. Well, uh, how does the Macha work? What does Shimon have to say? He has to make it clear to Ruvain that you better hold on to your document because the, the, the property that you're on is my property. Right? And, um, 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 what else did, did we talk about that, 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 that was interesting? Uh, about how many people, right? The latest, uh, the last look at that, how many people do you have to be mocha in front of? Two or three. We saw this, uh, this alocha by Lashen Hare, says Rabbi Ravuna, that, uh, Lashen Hare, that was something that was said in front of three people. It's no longer in the, it's outside of the realm of Lashen Hare. And, um, we said that, uh, 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 I think, uh, oh no, I think tomorrow we're going to say that, uh, the macha needs to be in front of two people. Yeah, uh, but then we said that, uh, yeah, even somebody who's mocha would have to be mocha every three years to prevent women from establishing a chazaka. Peace out.